name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. So today we are going to learn about the Sacred Heart Devotion. Uh, the entire month of June is dedicated to the Sacred Heart, and we just celebrated the feast this past Friday, uh, which is always the Feast of the Sacred Heart is always the Friday following Corpus Christi. And um, I think many of us are familiar with the uh, popular devotions, but I don't think many people are familiar with the fundamental disposition that should be motivating us to do the devotions of the Sacred Heart. And I will explain that. But first, um, the, the Feast of the Sacred Heart, uh, it, it's a relatively recent devotion. It, was, it was, um, came about through the, the visions and revelations given to St. Margaret Mary Alaco. That those visions began in 1693, and she was a nun of the Visitation Order, and our Lord visited her four times over the course of 18 months and, and gave her the substance of the Sacred Heart devotion. But prior to that, uh, this devotion has its roots in sacred scripture, and that is John 1934. Uh, one of the soldiers opened his side with a spear, and immediately there came forth blood and water. Uh, the saints meditated upon that passage for many, many centuries in the church, and, and even kind of, um, under, you can understand it to mean, one of the soldiers opened his heart with a spear, and blood and wa water came forth. And so it's recognized that in our Lord's side, that wound in his side, in his sacred heart, uh, it was a wound of love, the, the heart being the symbol of love and, and his love for mankind. Uh, so the, the, the love of God came out of that wound, and we are to return uh, in, through it and into it. So this, this um, uh, understanding and recognition has, has been in the church for centuries until it was finally given its, its um, uh, final form, as I mentioned, in 1693. So the Sacred Heart devotions are to attend First Friday Mass and receive Holy Communion for nine First Fridays. Uh, to spend one hour on Thursday night in front of the Blessed Sacrament in adoration of the Eucharist, and to observe the Feast of the Sacred Heart each year, as I mentioned, the first Friday the week after Corpus Christi. Uh, there are 12 promises our Lord gives to those who honor his Sacred Heart. I've, I've put those in the bulletin, uh, so read those, read those promises. Among them, uh, to those who honor his Sacred Heart, I will give peace in their families, I will console them in all their troubles, I will abundantly bless their undertakings, and I promise you in the excessive mercy of my heart to all those who receive communion on the first Fridays in nine consecutive months, the grace of final perseverance. They will not die in my disfavor, nor without receiving the sacraments. My divine heart shall be their safe refuge in that last hour. So I think that, that many, many are familiar with these devotions. If you are not familiar, um, I encourage you to become so. It, it is an excellent devotion just, just for those reasons I've mentioned. Uh, but there's a, a more fundamental point, a more important aspect of this devotion, and that is why? What is our disposition for doing the First Fridays? What should be our attitude and disposition going to Thursday night holy hour? Our Lord himself told St. Margaret Mary Alaco what he wanted and the reasons he had for, for asking her to do this and to propagate this devotion. But I don't think many people know what that is. Now, before we get to that, we will go over uh, some foundational conditions. These are not the requests of our Lord. This is simply what he stated to um, Margaret Mary Alaco and the conditions, the conditions uh, that, that, that in, um, made him do the requests of, of the Sacred Heart devotion. So this is the, the fundamental condition number one, is the all-consuming love of our Lord for mankind. He said to St. Margaret Mary, my divine heart, is so inflamed with love for men that being unable to contain within itself the flames of its burning charity, it must spread them abroad and manifest itself to mankind in order to enrich them with the precious graces of sanctification and salvation necessary to withdraw them from the abyss of perdition. So I would add that as an aside. It's not just the, the incredible love of God for mankind. It is his desire to save them from perdition. Right, Christ our Lord is mentioning damnation in this devotion. We don't hear that very often. Foundational condition number two, and this is not, this is a hit against us. This is not good uh, on our part. Why? Like the Sacred Heart devotion, our Lord shouldn't have had to ask for this devotion. 
but he did because of this reason. The ingratitude of mankind. Margaret Mary Alaco says, as she saw in one of her visions, from the sacred heart of our Lord, there issued an excess of flames as from a furnace. He revealed to me there in his heart all the marvels of his pure love, all the excess of love he had for mankind, but from whom he had received nothing but ingratitude and contempt. Our Lord says to her in another vision, Behold this heart which has so loved men that it spared nothing, even going so far as to exhaust and consume itself to prove to them its love. And in return, I receive from the greater part of mankind nothing but ingratitude, shown by the contempt, irreverence, sacrileges, and coldness with which they treat me in the blessed sacrament. Now, it's not just a greater part of mankind that isn't Catholic or doesn't know Christ or doesn't understand the blessed sacrament. It's Catholics. These are Catholics who know what the blessed sacrament is or who should know what it is and don't treat it appropriately. That's what he's complaining about. Irreverence, contempt, sacrilege. That's on us. That's on the Catholic Church. And it was, it was these conditions, the excessive love of our Lord and the excessive ingratitude of man that caused him to ask for those devotional practices I mentioned earlier. Why does he want people to go to the nine first Fridays? Why did he tell Margaret Mary Alaco to go to Holy, Holy, uh, uh, Holy Hour on Thursday night? Therefore, he said, I ask of you to atone for the outrages my sacred heart has received during the time it has been exposed on the altars. A blessed sacrament, that, that, that doesn't, God doesn't protect himself in the blessed sacrament. He is exposed. If we don't respect him, if, if we don't treat him well, he's not going to do it. He's going to let himself be profaned and, and have sacrileges committed against him. Every single Eucharistic miracle that I can possibly recall has never been a defensive miracle our Lord has never appeared uh, miraculously in, in, the, in the host as, as a judge or with a sword. Like in the Old Testament, fire would come forth from the tabernacle and consume people, not in the Blessed Sacrament. He appears as, as, as a little babe. He appears helpless as a child, as a lamb. If we don't defend, if we don't respect the Blessed Sacrament, he's going to simply be taken for granted. So this is the reason why we should be do, going to those first Friday Masses and making good Holy Communions. This is what we should be thinking when we go to Thursday night Holy Hour and there's our Lord in Holy Communion in the Blessed Sacrament, adoring Him, making reparations. Uh, an excellent book was written on this very, this very thing called The Devotion to the Sacred Heart. This was written by, um, in the late 1600s, so right at the same time, that Margaret Mary was getting her visions, and it was by Father John Corset. He was a Jesuit, and he, along with uh, uh, Claude, Saint Claude de la Colombière, who was Margaret Mary's uh, confessor, uh, they helped to propagate this devotion throughout the world. And John Corset wrote a book, and he, he identifies in that book three fundamental dispositions that we can uh, incite, excite within ourselves to respond to our Lord's request to atone, to make reparation. <clears throat> Number one, to recognize and honor the tender love which Jesus Christ has for us in the blessed sacrament. Now this, this is the best one to prevent further irreverence. Is better than making atonement is just not being offensive in the first place. And so if we can do that, if we can excite in our hearts a knowledge of the love Christ has for us, it's going to be easier for us to give him love in return, love and respect. And, and one of the things that is painful is when, when, when you love somebody passionately, not to have that love returned is very painful. That's the subject of, you know, epic poems and, and stories is unrequited love. Well, no one loves us more than Christ. I mean, even if... <clears throat> Even if everybody in the entire universe went to hell except you, Christ would still have done everything. He would have suffered his passion on the cross. He would have stayed on the altars and all of that for one person. That's an infinite love. So it's, it's meditating upon that. It's recognizing that. It's honoring that that is going to give us the ability to fulfill the other requests, to do these devotions, to give us the motivation. I need to make a return for this incredible love. 
<clears throat> Number two, make reparation for the indignities and outrages to which his love has exposed him during the course of his sacramental life on earth. Right? This is when we're going to First Fridays, when we're going to Holy Hour. Adore and make reparation to the Blessed Sacrament, especially for our own negligence. I'm, I'm sorry, Lord, for the times I received unworthily or when I was, or was ignorant or when I was uh, thoughtless or careless. Make reparation for that, for our own sins. To love greatly Jesus Christ in the Eucharist and to show this love by frequent acts of adoration and thanksgiving and by every mark of respect and veneration. So this third condition is is our enduring response to Christ. The fact that given that Christ loves us so much, given that he is subjected to so so many insults uh, and and such irreverence, um, I'm going to make every time, every time I come into the church, any time I'm around our Lord anywhere, I'm going to show him uh, every mark of respect and adoration, every mark uh, of veneration, uh, of deference, and so on. And that, that should be our attitude all the time anyways. Like, this shouldn't even have to be a, a, a devotional request. It should just be a given. But it's because we are so forgetful, uh, we are so distracted by what we see in this world, it's hard for us to operate with the eyes of faith. That's why I'm always harping on people, do your spiritual reading and do your meditation every day. If you're not reading about this stuff, if you're just hoping that, oh, I hope I get a good priest who just happens to tell me what I need to know, you're not going to know. Do your own spiritual reading and meditate. I mean, read that. Read, read for yourself. Behold this heart which has so loved men that it spared nothing, it consuming and exhausting itself to prove to them its love. Don't just gloss over that. Stop and do your meditation on that one sentence. That's what we need to be doing. That's what our, our spiritual life, that's where we, we really grow. We really make it internal. Now this last one, this last point, our response to the sacred heart. And he complained. It was, why is the sacred heart a devotion? It's because he's being treated with indifference and contempt in the Blessed Sacrament. And this is where I think the modern Catholic Church gets an F in the sacred heart devotion. Showing every mark of adoration and respect and veneration to the Blessed Sacrament? Hardly. There is the worst disrespect shown to the Blessed Sacrament. Worse these days than even 300 years ago when Christ was complaining. What do we see so often in in Catholic churches? People talking and chattering at Mass as if they were at a cocktail party instead of in the presence of Almighty God. Dressing as if they were going to a beach party instead of to the sacrifice on Calvary. They casually stroll in every other Sunday, missing their grave obligation, and hardly giving any acknowledgement at all to whose house they have just entered. They take Holy Communion, pawing all over our Lord's sacred body as if grabbing a handout, and no one takes any heed or cares about all the particles of God falling all over the floor. And yet we hear uh, from, you know, bishops and priests in the mainstream church, oh, this is the month of the Sacred Heart, let's pray the litany of the Sacred Heart, let's honor the Sacred Heart. Well, meanwhile... Very publicly, we have all kinds of insults and outrages and indifferences and sacrileges against the Blessed Sacrament. And our church leaders are doing nothing about that. Except wringing their hands and saying, let's, let's pray a litany. This is the fundamental uh, 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 core of the Sacred Heart devotion. Is making atonement for sacrileges making reparation for sacrileges. And you don't hear people talking about that with the Sacred Heart devotion. It's sacrilege. It's indifference. It's neglect. It's contempt. That's, why, that's the essence of the Sacred Heart devotion, is making reparation for that. If you don't hear about those things, the person telling you the Sacred Heart devotion doesn't know what it is. And with that kind of behavior just described, is it any wonder... That's, it's this, what are the reports? 70% of Catholics don't believe in the real presence? No surprise. They're not acting like they believe. And that, what is it? You know, if, even if you believe, the more you act contrary to that, that's going to affect you. You'll end up believing how you act. I don't really blame uh, the average Catholic for this. I blame the priests. 
I blame the bishops. I blame the church hierarchy. And so does Christ. He said to St. Margaret Mary Alaco in a special vision uh, about talking about indifference, irreverence. But what is still more painful to me, he said, is that even souls consecrated to me are acting thus. Because priests set the example for people to follow. If the priest is irreverent, the people are going to be irreverent. If the priest is having a loud conversation in the church, if the priest is ignoring our Lord in the tabernacle, if the priest is uh, very casual and dismissive of the Blessed Sacrament, so are the faithful. And our Lord complained about the contempt, the irreverence, the sacrilege shown towards him in the Blessed Sacrament, and this is what happens. When priests do not preach about the importance of respect in church, the reality of mortal sin, the necessity of confession, the grave obligation of attending Mass on Sundays and Holy Days. Now, we're fortunate in the traditional Latin Mass. Uh, it, it is very conducive in its, its just um, uh, atmosphere of fostering an attitude of respect and deference towards Christ. Uh, we speak in hushed tones. We make the sign of the cross. We keep our hands folded. We genuflect, we kneel down with reverence. We don't take Holy Communion. We receive it on the tongue waiting for Christ to come to us and not forcing ourselves onto him. But a person, we don't, you don't need to be going to the Latin Mass to show that kind of respect. That kind of respect should be shown in any church. Any church where there's the Blessed Sacrament, we should have that deference, that honor, that respect. Latin church, regular church, English church, uh, uh, Byzantine, Orthodox. If Christ is there, show him respect. And on the, on the other side, Simply because we're attending the Latin Mass uh, and that we have ec the externals of piety doesn't mean our heart is in the right place. We can still be irreverent and, and disrespectful towards Christ by our, our complete lack of attention to what's going on. You know, both interior and exterior need to match. In this diocese, uh, this, is the, this is the year of the Eucharistic revival. So let's go ahead and take that seriously. Uh, by showing our Lord every mark of respect and adoration. Reminding ourselves, even if we have already, we already know that, we already try, let's try some more. I mean, if, if, if this is God on the altar, and it is, I mean, what's too much? What's too much respect? What's too much veneration? Right? Show him that. Make it from the heart. And if I could uh, address the, the church at large, I would say stop talking in church. Stop dressing casually. Start taking your Sunday obligation more seriously. Show our Lord some respect. Cooperate with his sacred heart devotion. Don't dare to receive Holy Communion sacrilegiously. Get to confession. Genuflect before the Blessed Sacrament. Kneel down when receiving Holy Communion. Stop grabbing the host. Stop taking communion and start receiving him on your tongue in reverent respect. Let's ask our Lord for that grace to, to help us to foster within us that attitude of respect. And let's pray that more Catholics recognize this also, especially priests, if they need to. John 19.34, And one of the soldiers opened his heart with a spear, and immediately there came forth blood and water. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son what can we refuse to give him in return? Some simple respect and gratitude is the least that we can do. May God bless you all in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.